Let's talk about meal timing and exactly how to break a fast. So typically what I notice with people when they're following the carnivore diet is they kind of default into a setting where they're having maybe one to two meals per day. In all honesty, two meals seems to be the average from my experience. This is based on a observational subject group of, I don't know, perhaps about 300 people I've consulted with personally online for like a video call. But just online, like maybe hundreds, if not thousands of people that I've seen otherwise, it tends to be about two meals. Now, the interesting thing here is the carnivore diet does stabilize blood sugar. So you'll find that you're actually not eating so many meals. Your diet becomes easier to follow. You can go about your life all day, sort of not worrying. Black stays go, oh, I need to eat now. Okay, that's fine. Have your food, you know, cook up steak or something, have some eggs. Right, fine. You're, you're good to go. You might not even be hungry again to the next day. You might just eat once a day, like I said. So that's kind of what you're doing at the start. Now, before you get into this bit, there'll be a sort of phase where you transition carefully into doing this. So most people are actually eating six snacks or meals per day. Um, we know this from epidemiological data where they've sort of said, okay, guys, how, how often do you eat each day? Okay, I eat three main meals and three snacks. Um, I don't believe in snacks. I think a snack is a meal. It's just a crap meal, basically. That's another way of putting, um, or at least phrasing, what a snack is. It's a crap meal. So with all that being said, when we start from having four meals, five meals, six meals, we need to reduce it down slowly. And this will happen by default. Just by following a species appropriate diet, you're putting in the things that your body needs. And you're taking out the crap that it doesn't need to make your life a lot more easy. Now, with that being said, as you progress, you might find, okay, four meals, fine. Three meals, fine. Two meals, fine. But your default somewhere. That's what's key here. Your default somewhere. So with that being said, everything I'm telling you in this might not be an ease to you. The thing is, there's some things which you haven't quite pictured out yet, or at least thought about. So when you're transitioning from, say, four meals to three meals and vice versa, wherever you happen to need to supply your body with the food that you need to take in, you'll find that your gut will have some distress of some kind. You're changing the volume of your food, assuming you're eating the same total in the given day. Therefore, your gut either will or will not have a different signal. So if you're going from four meals per day to three, eating the same amount of food, that's a lot more food in your stomach. So your, your body will have to adapt to that. You'll have to get used to it. This same thing is true for any kind of diet. Our bodies are designed specifically to take in nutrients that they need and give your body a signal when, or at least your brain a signal when you don't need them. Okay, I'm full now. I don't need any more food. That's when you stop eating. Your body will tell you, you just have to listen to it. You have to get rid of all the emotional eating disorders and unhealthy behaviours out of your mind. Just get on with it, you know? That's the best advice I can give. So with that being said, when you are picking how many meals to start having, do it based on how you feel. You know, there's not a be-all and end-all kind of rule of thumb for people. A guideline one to three meals per day for most people is completely sufficient. Some people do fasting. That's a topic for another video, which I'll probably outline in that other video. But yeah, there we go. That's it. So a few little key points here. So you need to listen to your body. It's crucial to listen to your body's hunger and fullness cues and pay attention to what's naturally occurring in your mind. When you're sat there looking at the plate, you're thinking, mm, I want this food. Yeah, I could have this. Have it. Listen. If that food is no longer appealing to you, put it on the plate, leave it, put it in the fridge, cover it up or something. Have it tomorrow or have it later. Your body upregulates digestive enzymes as it's required to do so to give your body the fuel that it needs from the digestive process. So you got to be very thoughtful here. You can't just stuff yourself. And people do this priming protocol thing. It's got very limited use. So that'll be another topic for another video. Be considerate that you should also be consistent. If you're having two meals per day, don't then have four meals per day the next day. That probably won't help you out too much. Just be very, you know, responsible, listen to your body, go with the flow, don't try and force it. I know a lot of people that try to force OMAD because it sounds cool. Oh, it's OMAD, it's cool. Is it really? It's just eating one meal versus more than one meal. It's not particularly clever. 
It's just a default way of eating. So don't follow the trends, don't follow the fads. Do what works for you. And it might be that one meal per day is good for you. In which case, follow that. Do exactly that. So I'm not a proponent of OMAD, oh, 2MAD, 3MAD. Proponent of doing what your body needs. Now in this sort of circumstance where you're fasting for a prolonged period of time. Now I define a prolonged fast being perhaps more than 24 hours. That seems about right based on the fact that everything that you've taken in for your diet has now left your body. The chances are, assuming you're not eating copious amounts of food. So when you break your fast, if you have specifically a very sensitive gut, it might be prudent to actually just have something easily digestible. So eggs, if you tolerate them, scramble them up, use some butter, something like that. Have some bone broth, have a cup of that before having your, your first initial proper meal. You know, then when you're actually hungry, when your body tells you, that's when you have your first meal. There's nothing revolutionary about it. There's no hacks. There's no specialist products to buy. That's just what you should probably do. Now, some people, if they're experienced and they've been doing this for a while, trying to break their fast, you know, say 36 hours in, do what you've been doing already. Don't change it. If the problem doesn't exist, you don't need to fix anything. So they don't then listen to this video think, oh, Jonathan says eat bone broth and, you know, eat eggs or whatever, you know. You don't need to do that. There's nothing special about these foods. It's just they're particularly easier to digest. If you found this quick video helpful, please leave a like. Comment, subscribe if you have not yet already. Now, as you guys do know, as I have said in a lot of videos, I do not offer off-the-cuff advice. I do not want to harm people by telling them what to do, especially if it's going to be the wrong thing. I've been a victim of this myself, so I do not want to misinform people or put people in a state where they're really suffering because of my advice. I don't want that. So if you want to get hold of me, contact me from a website, which is compositionconsultant.com, and I'll be happy to help you through there for a paid consultation. Thanks very much.